Hey folks, Ray from DCRamerica.com here. Today we've got the Virtua Pro Elite Indoor Bike. Now, of course, there's been a lot of talk about indoor cycles, indoor bikes um, over the last few months, starting at Eurobike 2017, actually last year, and then really in Eurobike 2018 last month, uh, was kind of the formalization of some of those bikes onto the market itself. So for example, the uh, Tax Neo Smart Bike or Smart Bike, Bike Smart, whatever they want to call it, is out there. Um, Watt Bike as well, last uh, summer and then into this fall, of course, starting to ship last winter, more broadly um, or, or with more units uh, but some of those bikes are still kind of living availability for example the watt bike is only in the uk and the tax neo smart bike isn't going to start shipping until november um, and so there really actually isn't a ton of options if you're outside the uk or if you want a bike today but this one is actually available today and it's, it's something they've been shipping uh, units already for a while uh, to more of like the, the fitness industry than necessarily the pure like Zwift trainer road kind of indoor training realm that you may be more familiar with from my channel. But uh, they uh, swung by here today to the DCR cave to go ahead and let me kind of ride it and it's definitely interesting. It's, it's got some stuff that makes it so interesting that Zwift actually partnered with them and entered a licensing agreement to license and utilize the technology in their bike if Zwift were to make their own bike. Um, now, of course, I say if because Zwift certainly would never um, you know, publish whether or not they are making a bike or aren't making a bike, but obviously they have entered a contractual licensing agreement with this company that's been signed, sealed, delivered the whole bit um, to be able to go ahead and do that using the technology in this bike. So I want to try out this bike and see how it is. Um, of course, you can buy this bike today. Uh, it's 2,900 euros um, and it is shipping today. That's plus VAT. But before, I, before you like tune away, I caution the fact that that is also going to change pretty dramatically downwards in price. Um, so looking at doing a couple changes. One, they're looking at offering a version without a display on it uh, and also doing um, a lower cost kind of from a manufacturing standpoint, not changing the components, but by having higher volumes, they can bring this price down to between 15 to 1700 bucks again without the display uh, and bucks, I mean euros, uh, plus fat later on, ideally early at the end of this year or early next year. Um, so. Let me just kind of walk through front to back of the bike, some things that are notable and interesting. First off is the display right here. Uh, it's actually running Windows, which is cool. That means it makes it really easy to load Zwift on there or to load Trainer Road or most of those apps, the big apps that you're familiar with um, can load onto Windows. Uh, of course, down the road, you can potentially have your own display. It's then got these front handlebars. You can swap out different handlebars uh, in the truck that they brought here. They've got uh, like TT bars and stuff like that. So pretty straightforward. Up here, though, you have shifters. Uh, and so at the front, you've got basically three buttons right here. Uh, one is to go left and right. So you actually control this, and I'll talk about this in the game in a second, control your bike left and right using buttons here. And then you have standard shifters on both sides as well to go ahead and change gearing. And the thing I love about these shifters the most compared to every other bike I've tried is they click. Um, and I'm not sure why clicking is so difficult for manufacturers to understand, but on my road bike, I, I press, it clicks, and yet it doesn't click on other bikes. It's just, it's super frustrating. I want tactile, I want feel. The click is, is huge for me. Give me click. Um, moving back into here, you've got the ability to go up or down right there. So I can pull this out and go up there. Um, I can then take this piece here, and if I unlock it, I can go back and forth as well. So more adjustability there. Uh, and then in the same back here, I can go up and down using this handle there. This one here, you can see the centimeter markers on there. So pretty much like most indoor bikes, you can go ahead and change adjustability as you see fit. Um, you can also go ahead and swap out the pedals for what you want. Uh, so more or less the same there. On the back here, they've got a 10 kilogram flywheel. Uh, and you may be saying that sounds a bit low. And it might, but it actually feels pretty good. And it's sort of the same thing that you look at with some of the other trainers that may have lower flywheels, but doing other magic inside in terms of belts and stuff like that to make that flywheel feel more than it is. In fact, that's one of the pieces that Zwift in particular is looking at is the licensing of the feel of this bike. And that's why so many companies are interested in this bike kind of from an industry standpoint is the road feel of it uh, and how it reacts. And again, things I'll talk about in a second once we get there. Going to the back here, it's plugged in, so it does require power. Um, technically two, one for the screen and then one for the, the bike itself. Um, so with that, let's jump on it. Um, now, when I jump on, uh, it's gonna go ahead and I got this, their app already set up here, uh, which is something that's probably important to mention right now, is that as of this very second, this does not have AMP Plus or Bluetooth Smart Amp. The company is looking to implement that by the end of this year, um, which is of course makes their app compatible with 
with everything from Swift to Trainer Road to full gas to all the apps out there. Um, they get that, they're looking at doing that by the end of the year here. Uh, in the meantime, you've got their apps. Um, maybe we'll see them kind of jury rig something together with Zwift or Train Road so that you can get those apps up and working today. Uh, but that's uh, for now their app. And I'm gonna show you their app because it's sort of interesting what's gonna happen when I start here is that on the left-hand side of the screen, um, what I've got are other virtual riders. And so those are people, those are potentially uh, athletes, real athletes or otherwise that are there. And I can draft behind them. I can go ahead and um, use the controls on the bike to go left and right to get position behind them. And this is what makes it unique. And maybe saying, well, Zwift has drafting. It does, but it kind of sucks. And you don't feel like you do here. And what's really fascinating is when I get in behind someone, it's instantaneous feeling here. I can feel that I have less resistance because I'm now in their draft. And as soon as I use my um, little control things there to move to the left or the right of them, instantly I feel the wind. And it's, it's really, really fascinating. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start pedaling here uh, and get this kicked up. Um, I'm gonna use shifting here to go ahead and change my gears. So on the right hand side there are these buttons there and that changes my gear indicator there. On the left hand side, I can get into a, a bigger ring there uh, and catch back up a little bit. So go down and get me a little harder gear here to work with. You can see my watt is just played up top there and now I'm starting to catch up. Um, now you can see the group is off to the right hand side there. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in so you can see this a little bit better. I'm gonna go and move my rider now to the right hand side by using this. Here is where it gets a little bit into the gamification of things in that, yeah, I did sort of ride through that guy, but you ride through people on Zwift too, it happens. So as soon as I'm in there, I can feel it. The instant I get into that and does a blinky thing, that is where I'm in his draft zone. Now I'm ahead of him and now I feel it again in my legs because I'm outside of his draft. If I go off to the left over here, now, boom, I'm out of the draft. Over here, go slide in, and I get a little bit of reprieve, and then boom, straight back out of it again. And it's been interesting because it becomes more of a game than Zwift in that I've got to keep out where I am on the, on the road. So I go left and right and pull back versus Zwift. You're just simply pedaling. It feels pretty nice. Now, the next thing here is sprinting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna purposely stop for a second. Now there's two parts of sprinting that are interesting. One is what happens now where I've stopped the game. If you've ever done this on any app, you'll notice that when you start to try to go again, it's really tough. And this is where their, their internals are interesting because I can go like this and I'm instantly back in it without any sort of complexity. And then about a second and a half to two seconds later, I'm at the wattages that I was before. So there isn't like this overwhelming amount of resistance to get back into the game. And when it comes to sprinting, it reacts similarly as well. So change my gears here, get down to like a 5313 or so, a little bit lower, there we go. And you can see it quickly reacts up to 800 watts or so right now. Over this little ridge there, which I'm feeling as well. Come on, get me down to the downhills. There we go, a little bit of decline. And it's so fast, it's so responsive. And by the way, it's silent. Not because I'm not pedaling, but if you went back and listened to the video, when I wasn't talking, it's completely silent. So just listen here. There's nothing, there's just silence. Okay, so you've seen some of my on the road bits there. Um, now there are a couple of different modes in this as well. For example, there's a package within the, the drafting portion to be able to go ahead and draft um, against other riders. And so you can do this as almost a game into itself where you're practicing drafting, circling around and stuff like that um, against a team or within a team. And that's all becomes a bit of a game. Uh, there's also ability to go ahead and do an FTP test uh, where it's just gonna go ahead and keep on letting you uh, try to find your FTP. Um, a mode there is also a mode that's a structure workout mode. So the ability somewhat like train road, but not quite um, to have structure workouts built into it. Uh, but again, their goal though is really to eventually offer the ability to load train road directly on that tablet or connectivity to it um, for another tablet via AMP Plus and Bluetooth Smart. So overall, this is pretty cool stuff. Like it's definitely uh, a super realistic, I would say it's equal to, if not certainly better than the other indoor trainer bikes I've tried um, from a 
reels and feel standpoint. I think the tax is a very, a very good one thus far in terms of how it feels. The reactivity here though is, is really, really nice. And some of that is their platform and some of that is that drafting portion and how you interact with that, that makes it so interesting. Uh, and that's the piece that obviously Zwift is interested in and that they're looking to incorporate into their platform potentially down the road, either via hardware or via software. Anyways, if you found this all interesting, I'll also have a uh, post down below there with a bit more details and photos and all that kind of jazz you can check out. Or whack the subscribe button so you get videos like this uh, forever uh, because there's plenty more stuff to come this fall, especially in the indoor bike realm. And last but not least, if you found this interesting, whack that like button as well. Have a good one.